Wednesday. You know what that means. Time for the Southern California Writers Association Hump Day Book Tour. I'm Maddie Margarita here with Diana Pardee on tech. Every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., the Southern California Writers Association turns our Facebook page over to a new writer to talk about their books and their work. This morning, we are pleased to welcome Dave Putnam. Uh, Dave is um, a writer, uh, and during his law enforcement career, Deputy Dave Putnam worked primarily in California on teams for patrol, investigations, SWAT, narcotics, street level and majors, violent crimes, criminal intelligence, internal affairs, and the Detective Bureau. That about covers everything, Dave, right? Yes, yes. He rounded out his law enforcement career with a few years in the Hawaiian Islands as a special, special agent, part of a real life Hawaii Five O team. Now retired from law enforcement, Dave spends his time growing organic California avocados and writing everything. His latest in his Bruno Johnson series, The Sinister, is now available. Welcome, Dave. Thank you for having me. Uh, oh, we're excited to see you back. I'm excited to be back. Uh, I love talking about books and about writing. Um, my series is um, with, the, with, with the main character is Bruno Johnson. He's an ex-cop, ex-con, who rescues children from toxic homes in South Central Los Angeles. He uh, couldn't rescue them as uh, a cop because there's too many rules and regulations. So now he goes outside the law to rescue the children. Um, I, I wrote for many years uh, trying to get published and I was on my 38th manuscript when I sold number 36, which was the uh, disposables. Uh, and then I immediately dropped number 38 and started writing the, the sequel, which was the replacements. Uh, I wrote four books uh, current day, which were the um, disposables, replacements, the squandered and the vanquished. And in the vanquished, um, I got a little overzealous with uh, my main character, Bruno, and I, I kind of shot him up and banged him up emotionally. And the publisher said, I don't know how you're going to bring him back from this. And after I thought about it, I, you know, I hadn't thought about writing book five. So I um, went back and I wrote uh, four prequels. So The Innocence is the first prequel in the series. And it's the first day Bruno Johnson uh, is a detective. This first day as a detective, there's a knock at the door and an ex-girlfriend uh, hands him a baby and says that the baby is his. So now he has to contend with... Um, the child and his new job, which is um, very daunting because he is put undercover in a position that um, uh, puts him between a rock and a hard place. Each one of my books is a snapshot of my career. So uh, The Innocence is when I when I was working street dope, when I was working street dope in uh, South Central Los Angeles, the, the four prequels um, are The Innocence, I might start getting these because I got, um, the Innocence, The Reckless, The Heartless, and The Ruthless. The Heartless is a story about um, a jailbreak, an organized jailbreak in San Bernardino County, where the girlfriends of these murder suspects went in with cordless drills and uh, drilled out the visiting window, and six murder suspects, suspects escaped. And I was tasked with uh, running down the, the uh, murderers. Um, so that's what that book is about. Um, the Reckless is about my time in bank robbery. Uh, there's some real real stories of actual bank robberies that I worked in each book. In each, each book, there's something that I actually did uh, and converted it to- You were on the law enforcement side of the bank robbery, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, just one, sorry. We, the, the book is about um, mainly, because I just, is about a husband and wife team in real life who were recruiting children off of basketball courts in South Central Los Angeles and telling them that they can't go to jail because they're juveniles. They're giving them guns and stolen cars and training them on how to rob banks. And we were tasked with um, uh, taking them down without anybody getting hurt. Uh, that book also is very near and dear to me because uh, a good friend of mine was killed in the line of duty. And I put that in that book. Um, the, the next book um, was the, the Sinister, uh, was was back to the current day, and uh, it's a story of a kidnapping. And the Sinister is doing is doing very well right now. Uh, it got a star review on Publishers Weekly, and I'm um, getting a lot of great uh, comments about it. People emailing me about the book. Um, but the Sinister is a, a kidnapping that I turn on its head. It's not your regular kidnapping, and there's two major twists, two major twists in the in the book. 
Um, then I just recently sold the Scorn, which is in post-production now. That'll be out next February. And, the, and that is um, an, another book with Bruno Johnson, current day, and he's in LA still. And then um, the publisher wanted me to write one in uh, Costa Rica. So the, the one after that, the Diabolical, which is already written and the publisher has accepted it, it's set entirely in Costa Rica. Um, and then the one after that is The Scandalous, which is already written and it is, um, the publisher hasn't seen it yet or read it yet, but it is also set entirely in Costa Rica. Um, you are, you're killing me with your discipline. <laughs> Okay, you are killing me here with with your writing discipline and, and your ability and your talent and your creativity. No, seriously. And I I um I want to talk a little bit about the sinister, but before we do that, I want everybody to hear how you started writing when you were working. Because I uh, love that story. Okay. I was always an avid reader all my life. From a very young age, I, I read everything. Anything that's real written or caught my attention. Uh, back then, it was mostly Alistair McLean, John D. McDonald, um, those kind of books. Uh, so uh, I, was, I was in law enforcement, and they were paying me to play cops and robbers. They gave me a fast car and a gun, and I got and they told me I could chase crooks, and they're actually paying me to do it. But when we're on a, we're on a surveillance and there's downtime, I kept novels in the back seat of my car, and I so I now they not only pay me to chase to play cops and robbers, now they pay me to read books. So I would have these novels and I would read these books in between um, work chasing crooks. So I was down to my last novel in the back seat, and it was a sophomore effort of, the, of an author. The first book was an international bestseller. It was a fantastic book. But what happens so often in um, uh, authors is they work 10 years on a book and um, that they have one year to write the next one. And so this book was just a horribly written book. <clears throat> Great story, but... I, it didn't hold my attention, but I was forced to read it because I was a captive audience. So I read the whole thing and I thought I can do better than this. And so I wrote the first four novels on the front seat of my undercover car while I was watching Crooks. Um, <clears throat> and I realized then that it was that the, a good author makes it look really easy. And it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. So that's well, how you've, you've invested. You are invested, Dave. Yes. Uh, you know, one of, one of the things I love um, about the series and about Bruno is that you never take the easy way out. You know, you, you if it's going to be awful and terrible for Bruno, <laughs> it happens to him. I mean, I worry about him in your hands. Right. So um, he's evolved so much through this. And I mean, from where he is now to where he was even in the beginning before you wrote the prequel is so totally um, different. He is not um, Jack Reacher by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so your decision to write um, the prequels, how, how difficult was that to write him as a totally different character and not with all the baggage and scars that you've been writing him in those four books? Four books. Well, when I when I started writing Disposables, because I had so much experience writing the other books, I realized that the character has to be flawed um, because conflict is emotion and readers read for emotion. So when I first started uh, Disposables, I laid everything on top of Bruno as a backstory. I just made it up and gave him the backstory. So I used that as um, a story arc for those, um, those, those four books, the prequels. And it was going to originally be a story arc of three books, and then I couldn't I couldn't fit it all in there in three books. So the, the publisher kept calling it the four book trilogy because um, it took me four books to get all that information in. So I would Publishers take will. I would take one. Publishers will. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I, I took a one part of it uh, of that story that I gave him as background, and I wrote a book based on my experience in another area. Like, like the innocence was about narcotics. And it was, I understand what you're saying because Bruno has not evolved into the, the hardcore um, uh, crook chasing guy that he is in the disposables. But I wrote it based on my experience as being a detective the first day on the street in LA. And my, my, my experience, my, what I saw 
how I, how it affected me, and I try to put that in the book as, and in Bruno. So he's brand new at it, and he is um, very vulnerable and and innocent actually when he starts that first day as a detective. So when when you were writing these books and reliving some of these experiences, how, what how does that feel? What does that feel like? Well. I, I, I love I love my job. I mean, I, I love being a cop. I'd still be doing it because that was so much fun. I'd really enjoyed it, um, and I would get so buried in the in the manuscript when I'm writing that I would look up and four hours had passed, and I thought it was only you know 15 minutes. Uh, in the Reckless, it was such an emotional book for me. I wrote the book with a mystery structure on the front end because I wanted the reader to have more depth of character and understand how. My, my partner, um, how, how not he and I interacted. And then I, then I shifted to a thriller to advance the book. So I, I turned the book in the reckless and um, the publisher emails me after a few days, a week or two and says, we love this book, but we want you to cut the first hundred pages, which is the first hundred pages of the mystery structure. So I had to go back and rewrite the whole thing. And so when I write in the morning, I get up and I go back 20 pages because you're, as I believe that when you sit down to write, you could be in a different place each day emotionally. You could be a little elated, a little depressed, and you don't want that tone to transfer into the writing. So I go back 20 pages and I edit forward every day before I start writing again. Um, and then I write four pages, usually six. And then I, so I'm rotating back on my work three, four times before I move forward. Well, in The Reckless, I would go back and I'd given my, my partner a fictitious name. And when I was writing the day before, I had reverted without knowing it to my, his real name. So I had to go back and change his name. That's how deeply I was into that book. Um, I didn't even realize that I was doing it. That was the partner that you lost, right? Yeah, yeah, really so, good guy. So when, when people uh, read the series, what, what is it that you want them to experience? I want them to experience the, the, through the, the eyes of, of a cop, uh, what, it, what law enforcement's like and what the street is like, the sights and smells, the way things really work. Um, because there's two worlds. There's the reading world and then there's the real world. I wrote a scene in a, a jail scene in The Vanquished, I think it was. And um, I had... Three, or three different people come up to me at different times and say, and told me that scene wasn't real because that's not the way the jail works. And I wrote it just the way the jail works. I mean, people have, and that's what I'm thinking, you, you got to write it where the people think, otherwise they're going to think, no, that didn't, that can't happen. So Did, yeah. Didn't you work in the jail for a while? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And this was, this was um, a, a scene right out of when I worked in the jail and the, it was, it had to do with, how the crooks are, people think that the crooks are held in individual cells. They're not, there's only a sally port and everybody walks around in the jail during the day. So they have modules like 3,600 and 3,200 and uh, the old side and the new side, they have escalators inside there so that crooks can come, come and go and they get visiting passes, visiting passes, medical passes, uh, chapel, there's all kinds of passes they get from the module deputy. And so you see these crooks walking all around free. And so they'll get a pass to go over to the other side, the new side, commit a robbery and a murder and go back and hide in their, in their cell. And so it's like a city. There's murders, robberies, rapes. Everything's going on in that jail, just like a city, but it's a concentrated vortex of criminality. And uh, it's really an intriguing situation. And I tried to uh, bring that out in the vanquished in that jail scene. And the, and the people are saying, no, the jail's not like that. Well, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Sorry. You know, that, uh, but that's great. I mean, these are the kinds of things that I think readers, uh, the advantage that readers have over non-readers, uh, because you do right. learn so much, even, and you're learning a lot about what's happening while you're enjoying yourself and you don't even know you're learning. Um, right. So, and um, okay, so we we talked about uh, the series a little bit, and just so uh, to finish up on this, the, the latest number nine in the series in the Bruto Johnson series is um, the Sinister, um, right, right. and where do you see him um, 
in this in this novel. It's just is like a, uh, a book shot of where he is, snapshot. Um, it, the the book takes off um, two months after the vanquished ends. And they were, Bruno was in a pretty horrendous shooting with, with his wife, Marie, and he is gunshot, I think in two places. And he's emotionally broken because of what happened in that book. And it, he's still recovering when a good friend of his comes and asks him for a favor. Uh, it's the day Bruno is about to leave with his wife and go, go to Costa Rica where he's keeping his kids that he's rescued. Um, and he stays one more for one more caper in the US. Uh, so he is still recovering and he falls asleep in the, in the car when he shouldn't and he's shaky and sweaty. Uh, I give him a dog and there's the, the comments now are the, the sidekick crook that he picks up a guy named um, I can Owsley, I give him. And he, the, the secondary character has the same weight of a main character and uh, people are just commenting on how much they, they like him and they're comparing him to Joe Pesci in the um, uh, Lethal, Lethal Weapon series. So I had a lot of fun writing that one. Um, and in the Costa Rica books, I, because I enjoyed putting a dog in there so much, I gave him another dog in the Costa Rica episodes, the two of them there. And I had a lot of fun writing those too. Well, we're going to look forward to those. We wish you the best of luck uh, on there. If there's anybody from Netflix or Amazon or any, any streaming service out there, nine great books. That's a lot of episodes. That's a lot of seasons. So um, we'll keep our fingers crossed, Dave. Thank you. Thank you for and, having me. And where can people find your books? Any place. You can get them any place, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, any place where books are sold. Um, or you can uh, e email me on my website, davidputnambooks.com. Um, I'm always happy to answer questions about writing or about reading or about the Bruno books. Um, yeah, Mary just came in and gave me the eye. I don't know what she's... <laughs> Um, but you know, we, we love we love a man who can write and who also listens to his wife. So there you go. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we hope we'll see you soon. Like I said, best of luck. Um, and for everybody else, thank you for joining us this morning. If you enjoyed this and you'd like to share it, you can find share it on Facebook. You can also find it on our YouTube channel, which is SCWA Writers Online. Um, and if you do, um, and if you can, if you could buy Dave's books, that's great. If you're going to buy them in a library or share them if you could review them. Um, I'm sure he'd appreciate reviews. So anything you can do to help we support our writing community, please do. So take care, Dave, and we'll see you all soon.